Good morning and welcome to Family Sunday here at House of Power Outreach. We thank you for joining us online for another service. Uh, and, and we're uh, just excited to be able to broadcast these messages to you. Now, Pastor Rita and I just we enjoy listening uh, to to sermons and just uh, kind of bouncing off of one another. Just like just enjoy just to, the fellowship uh, with her as and, you know as a minister of the gospel and just our friendship is just amazing to be able to do that. And we enjoy having you with us and, and during these service and during these times. So this is as I said before, this is our family Sunday. Um, if you were able to join us at 10 a.m. on uh, Sunday morning, we would welcome you to come in and be a part of service in person. Uh, all the kids stay inside. We have a message where we speak over the kids every month, you know, uh, about the purpose and the will of God for their lives and how to overcome things and, and, and be victorious during their school year. So it is a great time. And then, you know, they have a lot of things they get to do, activities. And so we, we all welcome you to come out and be a part of that. As well, please, and you can see these things on our HOPO Church uh, website, and you can see all the different types of times that we have these deals and events, as well as the different ministries that we have in place. Uh, we welcome you to be a part of that. We also welcome you to uh, partner with us in ministry and giving uh, and finances and, and helping uh, spread the gospel throughout the entire world. We're going to pray, we're going to enter in, and, and then we're going to go right to the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to speak and, and present the word as well as, as receive from one another today. We thank you, Lord God, as you minister to us, Lord, that, that we uh, just be in a place where you can have your way in all that we say and do. So I thank you, Lord, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, we're talking about hope today and being hopeful. I think the first message I ever uh, preached when COVID and we have doing these things online was about populating hope and gathering as much hope as possible. Make sure that that's your largest crowd. So we're going to hope for the hope. You know, you got to have hope in the things that you're hoping for because circumstances will try to take them away. So God outstacks the odds that are against us. And he does. He he builds up and say, I'm God. I'm bigger than any odds that show up against you that try to make you feel hopeless. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17 through 20. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the presence of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not yet exist. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as he had been told, so shall your offsprings be. Without weakening in his faith, he acknowledged the decrepitness uh, the, the, the of his body since he was about 100 years old and the lightness of Sarah's womb. Yet he, he did not waver through disbelief in the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. It, man, this is the greatest thing of thinking about the fact that, that Abraham, God said you're the father of many nations, he had no kids. The power of, of being hopeful uh, when, when, it's, when it comes to Christ and, and being hopeful in the things of God, it, it, it doesn't, you bring zero to the table. We can even say Abraham brought less than zero. He brought nothing to the table, but he didn't let the hope of one day having a son make him hopeless by the way he was and by the way his body was. And, and neither should you. Neither should you let anything come against you and make you feel hopeless because you're hopeful. Maybe you're hopeful for a great job. He's saying, well, my, I don't have the education. Well, don't let that, uh, don't let that deter your hope. You know, say your kids and you want to see your whole family say, but but everyone is acting wild and going, but don't let that deter your hope and your belief in God. Because the enemy would love for you to start looking at things that are our surroundings and get you off the hope that you have in God. And and here when we're talking about hopeful and hopeless, they're both contagious. Your hope is contagious, but being hopeless is also contagious. And, and, and if you let that begin to run wild, I'd, I'd rather make and contaminate everyone with my hope than let them become contaminated with hopelessness. And so they, and they, are, they are ignited by what we, are, what we are willing 
to give the most attention to. You know, if I give, if Abraham would have looked like I'm 100 years old, my wife is 75, how are we going to be the father and parents of many nations when we're too old to even have a kid? And just because they were too old to have a kid, God is still great enough to give them a kid through them. You know, not not in any other method, through them. You cannot afford to let something, their circumstances, and maybe you think you're, you're past your time. Maybe it's you, you're never going to see your dreams come true. You, those things have been popping in your head because you've missed your time. You're old or whatever. Stop. Get your hope back. My hope is in Christ. He, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God is never out of time. He's over time. He's never out of time. And so we have to begin to build that. Abraham valued God's word. And I believe this with all of my heart. He valued God's word over his and Sarah's body. He had to. You have to. I have to value God's word over, over ourselves, over our children. Value God's word more than COVID. I value God's word more than the evil that's in the world. You have hope. You have a purpose. God has a great plan for you. And you have to get excited about that plan and don't let the day-to-day -day stop you from the very blessing that God has given you. Keep the vision. Keep seeing it. Keep it, keep it. Keep the possibility right there in front of you because it's impossible with you, but with God, all things are, and I'm pretty sure you could say it, possible. And you got to say that. All things are possible in Christ, in God. So our hope should never end based on the way things look around us. That should never be your period to your hope. That should be just a comma and say, yet I still hope anyway. Uh, or what, what we are incapable of doing because it is all in God's hands. So, and so my surroundings or what I'm incapable of doing, it doesn't matter. That, that doesn't stop me from being hopeful because it's in God's hands. And nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. And so as we do this and we move forward in our hope, we just continue to believe and we stretch ourselves to trust God in all that we are doing. So when we value when we, when we value God, uh, value God, we will not become vulnerable to the inability and limitations of man. So I want to value the things of God. So vulnerability makes you, it'll steal your hope. You know, they, they, you know, they talk about the depression of men that, that over 40 and 45, did the men just begin to hit a depression feeling hopeless? Like maybe they're not where they wanted to be, where they're supposed to be. Listen, you are alive. You're right where God needs you. You know, right, where God going to be able to use you. you. You just be there. Your children may feel hopeless because they feel like, you know, all their friends may be passing by. They don't know where they're going to go to college. Our seniors are struggling. No, no, no. Keep your hope. You're still breathing. God is going to use you. Just stop and start listening to the voice of God and what God has planned for you and get your hope back. Those are not foolish hopes. Those are not foolish dreams. Those dreams you have to travel the world, spread the gospel, the things that you know that's in your heart to do. It is not impossible. God wants to do it through you, but you cannot let something steal your hope. Abraham and Sarah could have given up. They, they, you know, by all accounts, they're foolish for continuing to believe. But the one account is that they counted on God and that made all things possible. And so we, we got to look at beginning to pull ourselves together and begin to pull ourselves back into that place. So we have to be careful as to how long we, we, uh, we, we hurt when people say they can't be there for us or, or we feel down because people say they can't be there for us like they said they would because it, it can cause us to become contaminated with, with what is missing more than being elevated by the God that's always with us. He said he'll never leave us or forsake us. So if someone says, oh, yeah, they said they'd be there. They said they'd do their part, said they'd be there with you and back you for your dreams. And then when they walk off, you let them go. You let them pass by. Do not become contaminated because they couldn't keep their word. Men will fail you, but God will never fail you. Don't let it contaminate you. Let the word of God, what God has spoken into your life, elevate you and say, God, I still believe what God is going to do. I still believe. I don't care what you read about my child. I still believe God is bringing them through and you have to hold on to that. And God is no respect of person. If he did it for Abraham and his impossibility by the natural way, he's going to do it to you and do it for you and do it for us in general. Let me make sure I put myself in the blessing. So what you know can keep you from what you need to know. You don't believe that, right? What you know can keep you from what you need to know. People can begin to fear 
and and because of what 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 they know they can be too involved we tell people quit watching the news quit quit watching these things and because you can be so caught up in the fear of that thing and what you, it, it'll keep you from what you need to know that that god be strong and courageous D don't fear god didn't give you a spirit of fear but you're watching the news and it's keeping you from what you need to know put that news down turn that off and pick up the word of god Find out what you need to know, right? Because see, if, if what I know keeps me from what I need to know, that means it's keeping me in the same place. I can't grow from where I am. Abraham was a great example from, of, of, of not letting what he knew about himself physically to keep him from what God could do supernaturally. Right. He said, I know what I know about me physically. I, I know I, I know my age, but supernaturally, that's what one I'm going to tap into. What does get you to do that? Tap into what God has for you supernaturally. And John chapter 15 and verse one through three, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the keeper of the vineyard of the vineyard. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit and every branch that does not bear fruit. He prunes to make it even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. So we talk about the necessity of pruning and in gardening because pruning means growth. Pruning means someone cares enough to cut the things off of you that are not life giving. And that may be friendships, there may be people, your parents care enough about you to tell you the truth. It is not you, it, when someone won't speak the truth to you and you are obviously doing something wrong, that person don't care about your growth. They, they in fact, they may enjoy you staying the same or maybe they don't enjoy you staying the same, but not helping you grow. To prune, to cut back so that you can get rid of the dead parts and start to grow in healthy parts. The Bible says, he says, I am the true vine, meaning there are other vines that are not true. There are other vines that are lie. If they're not giving you hope, they're making you hopeless. And so you got to get back to what makes you hopeful, what makes you happy, what makes you healthy, what makes you stretch and reach up and make you joyous to the things of God. And so you begin to restore your hope. We must be careful when things happen against us that we don't forfeit. Oh my gosh, we don't forfeit our hope gotta be careful like well ain't nothing good's gonna ever happen to me no one's ever gonna treat me right we see that when when, when uh people go through hurts and relationship then they deem all men are evil or all women are evil you know they, they just throw out everybody you know including a baby with the bath of water but you can't let a bad thing forfeit your hope you must allow it to make you turn to the one who gives you hope at all times so he is jesus our hope of glory uh, but we allow all things to be used by God for his growth. Man, all things work together for the good. I know I'm jumping ahead of myself. I see it, Romans 8, 28. If all things work together for the good, so whatever happened to you, God still has a good available for you. He didn't make that thing. He didn't ordain that thing to happen to you, but he'll use it. He'll use it for his benefit. So God's respect for those he called is revealed through his willingness to correct and redirect their way. You know, it's and it's a powerful thing. You know, I could tell when certain when, when coaches cared about me, the ones that screamed and yelled and got on to me cared about me because they wanted to see me do better. They wanted to see me grow better. My uh, theology professor, he, he, he wanted to see me do better. So he'd get on me. He'd get on me. I don't want to see you doing things wrong. I don't want you to do things out of order. So I'm going to get on you. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't care that you were going to uh, drive yourself off that uh, mental cliff, so to speak. So we got to look at the, forward, the fact that to care about someone means that you're willing to step up and get on them. Don't get down because you're having to get on your kids. You love them. You love them and you know that there's a better life for them. You don't want to see them taking steps and roads that are going to take them from their best. You know, so all things work together for good. And that is the verse that helps keeps us, that helps hold up our hope, right? Hold up our hope. God, even though things are chaotic around me, I know. I know things are going to work together for the good. And that's the word of God. See, the logos word of God. I'm going to talk about logos. Logos is a word that comes that takes chaos and bring forth peace. The very thing that should be chaos in your life. When God says, I am always with you. I'll never leave. That peace, that logos word of God. And let the logos word come to you. 
and to strengthen you and begin to restore your hope. We're talking about how old you're. I, I, people come to me all the time like, man, you know, uh, we, we were even at the, we were at the gym yesterday and this guy was watching us work out and he's, you know, just being joking like, oh, that guy's <laughs> talking about me. Like, yeah, 76 years old, he, he still comes to the gym. Yeah, I'm not going to lay down and, 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 and pass away and I'm not 76. I'm 54 years old, but I'm going to make sure I stay in there. I'm going to make sure I'm doing everything I can to help, help be healthy. I'm not going to sit around and complain about living alone because I got brothers that are in the grave that didn't make it this far. So I'm going to celebrate the life I'm living. Get some hope about you. Quit complaining about the body that you are alive and living in and go have some hope about it. Get up and go do something with it. And so that's a rejoicing time. So no matter what is happening in your life, stick with God because he has good, good waiting in the end. Right. So if all things work together for the good, so whatever happened to me can't happen in me. And as long as I don't let it happen in me, it can't steal the hope that God has given me. So I have my hope. I trust God. He's going to turn it for the good. The very thing the devil meant for evil to take me out, God is saying, I'm working it for your good. God is so good at making things work out for the good that you would think he set up the bad, but he didn't. He's just good at making things good. Understand that? Like, and if not, just roll, re, re, hit pause and rewind, rewind the tape. Listen, scream. The surroundings are screaming that things are hopeless. This world, they're saying everybody's going to hell in the handbasket. Things are, it's evil out here. Uh, buy your gun, buy your weapons, do whatever. And that's fine. I'm not, you know, not trying to judge you for whatever you're going to do, but don't let that dictate it. Your God is still bigger than that. Don't let that dictate how you're going to live your life. Afraid to go outside, afraid to go to the store. No, no, I walk with Jesus. I follow with Christ, right? The Bible said, the Bible also says to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. And so if anything, you're just going to get me closer to Jesus that much faster, but I'm not ready to go now. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. It says, I know uh, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, listen, there's some, a couple things in there and everyone quotes Jeremiah 29, 11. And that's great. But when he says, I'll give you a future and a hope, right? It's one thing to to be blessed. It's another thing to be have hope with the blessing. So a lot of times there are people that have got a lot of money, but they're hopeless. They got a lot of things, but they're hopeless. And God says, I don't want you to have things. I want you to have hope so that you're not leaning on the things. You know who brought you here and you know that's who you have hope in, not in the stop. But God says, I want to give you a future and a hope. And then this, the, the last part of the last verse says, you will find me when you search me with your whole heart. See, it can't be half-hearted. It can't be a thing like, God, well, you know, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if anything good. Nothing ever good happens in my family. Maybe we're not supposed to be. Maybe we're cursed. You can't come to God like that. Come to God fully expecting. Have a Psalm 62, 5, the spirit of expectancy. Come fully expecting for your hope. To be populated by the word of God. That populate, you'll feel the crowd. Your hope starts cheering for you because you refuse to let it go. Let your hope live. Let it be alive inside of you. So God has our ending and it's up to us to allow what happens in the middle to steal our hope in what God is doing. So, you know, if, if we let the middle steal our hope, right, it, it's, we, we forget there's still more. Don't die in the chapters. There's an ending that's, that's set up for you. There's an ending God has for you. Don't let this middle part stop you from having hope. Hope is an expectation for something to happen a certain way. And, and the best hope to have is in God. And as his thoughts for us are good and not evil, that's the best way to know. Listen, know what God has said about you. That's the most hopeful thing you can do is when I know what God has said about me, that he's thinking good about me and not evil. So I can have an expected end. That's going to keep me hopeful when others who may be saying evil and not good about me doesn't matter because I know what God thinks. I know how God feels about me. So knowing the good that God thinks about us makes our hope contagious. Then your kids can get it. So I've seen where parents who are always doubtful and down and, and, and afraid. And their kids act just like them. Kids act just like them because there's more caught than taught. So 
you know, you quit trying to tell your kids to do something that they don't see you doing. And there is way more caught than taught. And so we have to come back to that and let that message us, hey, I want the hope to be contained. I want you to know that God is always with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Your friends and people may leave you, but God will never leave you. You pull them into that and it will flow through our entire family. So what are, you, what are they catching from you? Are they catching hopeful or hopeless? We want them to catch the hope and begin to build from that. So catch the favor of receiving from God and watch it consume your entire family. I, I had a good friend of mine, Ms. Tavian Harris, said she, I love her expression, says, I got mad favor. I, I love that. I love the fact that she said her favor comes, shows up and like shows up violently to make sure she is blessed in all that she does. I want you to have that same mentality. I want you to grow in that and grow in the hope that God has given you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Father, for a rejuvenation of hope in, in us and resurrecting that hope and power that you brought to us for us to have. So to so walk and settle and trust in you, Lord, that we are, are blessed to be able to sit in your midst and say, against all odds, I'm going to hope in God because God has got what I need and God is always going to finish what he started. He will never leave me or forsake me. And Father, we just receive it together. We thank you that our children will become contagious, that they'll become hopeful. The kids that may not be speaking to family, I pray in the name of Jesus, this hope begins to run through the house and they're going to start to communicate and love on one another and give before God and get in church and start to fellowship with you. Lord, I see it. I see a family coming together. I see the kids responding. I see them not being called rebellious teenagers and not acting like rebellious teenagers, but coming to know Christ. Lord, we thank you for the hope we have over our nation, over this world. We believe in you, Lord God, that we're going to spread the gospel and see lives change, leaving no one, no chance to go to hell. We're going to see them come to Christ. We we honor you. We thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Can't wait to see you next time. You have a blessed celebrated week. Bye-bye.